Thanks for joining us. You're watching Tea Time, a program that brings you the biggest entertainment news. And as you know, all the big stories live right here on Plus TV Africa. I'm Takumbo Taiwo, together with my co-anchors, the uncompromising Elake Banjo Ooh. and the unreserved Ife Oshun K. Oh, hi, Come guys. On, unreserved. Takumbo, yes. uncompromising. <laughs> <Yes>. Unreserved. <laughs> unreserved. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're not reserved. Exactly. exactly. Reserved. Unreserved. And she doesn't compromise. I do compromise. You do? Yes. Hmm. So I'm not reserved. No, that's what unreserved means. By the way, it's compliments. It's compliments. So I'm going to be reserved on the show today. Then. Why? <laughs> so that I can be reserved. Okay, so uh, before we bring you our first story, Ife will be telling us about his recent attendance at uh, Industry Night that was hosted by Duncan Mighty. Yes. Ife, why don't you tell us, you know, what happened and um, how... It was, it was an amazing experience. Duncan Mighty obviously doing a lot for Port Harcourt because um, a lot of upcoming PHCT new acts were there mm -hmm. and he gave them the platform. And come to think of it, a lot of um, prominent Nigerian celebrities blew from um, the industry the nights nights. platform. So mm -hmm. anyway, so I think he, he did great. And then he came with his band, he came with his official DJ, DJ214. It was pretty cool. I never mm -hmm. knew it was cool. I think PH people are really, really very cool because it was more like okay. a PH gadget. Okay. And All he got right. a lot of love from yeah. Nigerian celebrities that okay. came out to support him as well. Okay, and before yes. we delve deeper into it, let's, uh, because we got, we've got that video now, so we'll bring you the video regarding uh, the industry nights with Duncan Mighty. Take a quick look. So that was just a little glimpse, just to give you an idea of what went down at the industry night that was hosted by Duncan Mighty. So if I tell us yeah. more, because I think your highlight, you know, was his dancers and his uh, yes, shaking his touch, of it. Yes. Bum bum. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to describe that anymore since you guys made me like uh, a pervert yesterday. <laughs> so I, oh, oh, okay. I refuse to be called that today. So um, okay, apart from the highlights, I I also got the chance. Mm -hmm. to um, ask him about um, the rumored allegation of him battering his wife and yes. he said he's in a very good mood and he really doesn't want to talk about that. So he still but didn't deny DJ it. DJ mm -hmm. spoke for him saying that Duncan Mighty, I'm sure if you keep watching the clip you would have seen that bit mm -hmm. where he said um, Duncan Mighty is a great man and he would never do that, he would never touch his wife and I think I believe them and from his performance, from his... Mm -hmm. um, uh, demeanor mm -hmm. and all of that. The mm -hmm. vibe I got from him, it mm -hmm. seemed like a very, very positive You based honesty and, and lying based on vibes? No, I'm just saying like, come on, man. Mm. Sometimes you can't judge a book by its cover, but yes, you that can. cover mm -hmm. I saw um, on, fr on um, Wednesday was a very, very good cover. I don't know what's inside, but it was a very good cover. Like where you don't agree? Incorrect, <laughs> I don't agree. I think even when you asked him that question, he still didn't say... He didn't deny you. He didn't deny you or accept, mm -hmm. but he still said... Well, he addressed it on stage. The first thing yeah. he said when he got on stage was, okay. uh, then talk say I beat my wife. <laughs> and you get it. So he addressed <laughs> and that. And he made a and, joke out of yeah, it. Yeah, but this is not right. something to be joking about. He should have mm -hmm. still said, you know, said, I would never yeah. do that. I don't okay. condone that. Yeah, All righty, yeah. time to bring you our next story. And it's on Yinka Ayefele, who meets with the governor, uh, Amosun, and relocates Fresh FM uh, to Abeokuta. Because you know, like I was telling you, Ife, that but, um, mm -hmm. even the day that it was demolished, they yeah. were already airing. Fresh FM was still yes, airing regardless. Yes. So I think that's what even happened prior yes. to us getting yeah. the full news. I just think um, sometimes in life, every disappointment is it's a, a blessing. blessing. Because, um, okay, here was um, in his own state, mm -hmm. where he's from, or your state, he got um, his radio station got demolished. And then somebody from Ogun State, the president of Ogun State, I said the president, the governor of Ogun State. I was State, like, okay. The governor of Ogun State. Yeah. I'm also invited him to the state house, gave him a new station. So even if he decides to go back to his mm -hmm. home, hometown now mm -hmm. to start another fresh Do you effect? think he would even go back? Because from what I understand, it's like his hometown treated him like trash, and here's yeah, another governor but, but treating I'm him like treasure. I'm looking at it from a businessman perspective, perspective now. Yeah. I think he would want to diversify, he would want to enlarge his coast, mm -hmm. so definitely he would um, 
want to have another branch in his hometown, yeah. possibly in Lagos, possibly across all the 36 states in Nigeria, including Abuja, mm -hmm. you get me? So I think, yeah, like, what do you think? Do you think that would be too fast too soon? Um, no. Okay. What I think is, I'm not sure how true this story is. Okay. That's my issue. Okay, you mean this, um, a, a, this a good state? thing, because oh. I have two theories. I have a feeling okay. there was already a branch in the works in Abelkata already. Mm. And I also feel like no one said, it, like, none of the pages of Yinkai Yifal hasn't said anything about this, mm -hmm. how true this is. Not mm -hmm. everyone is circulating this information. Mm -hmm. And also, um... I've been on like the, um, a Muslim's page as well. Yeah. No one has said anything officially that Ayefele has now moved Fresh FM from Oyo State to Ogun State. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how true this is, but I have okay. seen that picture circulating of the Fresh FM, mm -hmm. which I think backdrop. probably was taken, yeah, the backdrop, I think was taken before. Before. I'm not okay. really sure how true this is. But so however, yeah, however, this is to yeah. a Muslim yes, was, was current. Yeah, and also yeah. Ajimobi also visited him as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So okay. I don't know what they're discussing. Mm -hmm. What I do think though is this could. As Yinka Ayefele rightly mentioned, could, mm -hmm. this could be politically inclined because okay. both governors are from the same party mm -hmm. and are obviously like friends, mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would argue, or colleagues, as mm -hmm. it were. So I don't know what is going on politically behind the mm -hmm. scene, mm -hmm. but it's a good move for Ayefele and he should yeah. embrace it. And he should now make sure that no one has a reason to demolish any of his buildings. Make sure you have all the planning mm -hmm. permissions. Because this, this ish issue has been going on since 2017, last year, May. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and there's like a whole breakdown of when they issued the notice, why they wanted to. So there's like a whole correspondence. Yeah. So, but do you, what you I want know... to ask you, let me just quickly ask all you right. first, sorry. Um, let me just quickly ask, Lakbe, would you then want to dismiss or debunk this or discredit it? As I think we should wait. It's a developing, developing story. story. Because okay. I think until he officially says, says it and says what the plans are and they've said yeah. okay this is where it's located i i agree then, and i yeah. concur if yeah. you were going to say I, I also think um the fact that they're from the same party and um you know, these are two different states involved there. Mm -hmm. You would probably wouldn't see anything on your pages because you wouldn't want it to look like um, I'm bringing down this other governor okay. and all of that you mm -hmm. get. So it wouldn't be like, okay, you did this to him, I'm elevating okay. him. So I think that maybe that's part of the reason why this is not being publicized. Maybe. All yeah, right. that's a good point. Okay, time to take a quick break. When we return, we'll be bringing you details regarding uh, a studio guest that we're going to be interviewing later on. Trust me, it promises to be incredibly entertaining. And if you miss it, you will most certainly miss out. We'll be right back. That money will shoot every person that will look and shoot. We will never die there. You could have killed us for a long period of time. In that time, why I carry Gloria? I first go to hospital first, but it didn't you know, go. Now I call me that, Mama. She just pulled it, he pointed, and Anyone shot. They suffer too much. They suffer too much. Issues around the Nigerian police. We have to tackle it holistically. Welcome back, it's Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, and we're about to bring you and introduce our studio guest. She's a drama and acting coach, a director, an actress, singer-songwriter, vocal trainer, and having studied in the UK, trained in Israel, our guest is an international personality indeed. And it gets even more interesting. She's so beautiful she can pass for a beauty pageant queen. So elegant she can pass for royalty. Allow me to introduce to you the radiant, regal, and refreshing run your man Ooh, and the crowd goes yes <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on to the show. Thank it you. It is an honor to have you here indeed. So, uh, where do we even start? I think I'm going to let uh, ladies start first. <laughs> well, it's lovely having you. Thanks for joining us. Um, I just wanted to kind of begin with your kind of acting career and directing. And how did you get into the entertainment industry right back from Israel before you got into Nollywood here? How did it all start? Back in Israel? Yeah. I studied, well, actually, well, like a lot of people here, I studied engineering and then I went to study to studying acting. 
Um, you studied engineering? Yes. yes. I was going to bring that up. I was like, how did that go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You did your research really well. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you dig all that up? <laughs> and then you did um, in London, yes. School Quite, of Poetry and Literature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literature. Yeah, and before literature. That, yeah. Yes, that was yes. before that. I want to get more into that um, engineering. So what, what influenced your decision to like changing into, like, should we say... Acting. Acting, yeah. Um... You know, I was an engineer. I didn't like it. Okay. Um, okay, there was there was there was this guy in my neighborhood. We used to sit in the cafe together. Turns out he's a director and an acting uh, drama teacher. Okay. And uh, he said, "Ronya, come to my class." I was pregnant with my firstborn, and um, I just quit my uh, the last job I did engineering. So I said, "Okay, let's just have some fun," and I went. And turned out I was cut up for it. <laughs> I, I thought the response to that would have been, I didn't want to deal with all the fan manure anymore. Uh, <laughs> all the BS. <laughs> we won't go there. We won't go there. <laughs> we won't go there. All right, so I really want to know, why Nollywood? Because you could have gone to Hollywood, you could have gone to Bollywood. Why Nollywood? Um, it was fate. I, I, okay, so... The, the only thing you haven't mentioned is that I was here when I was 14, 15. Mm. Oh, why was that? Your parents? Mm. Yeah, my parents uh, brought me here when I was about 14. Diplomat? So, no, they were engineers, hence the engineering career, mm -hmm. which never happened. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> um, I, so, from here I went to the UK, then um, right before coming here, my husband and I decided to move to Germany. And we went there, got a job there and everything. And just before the final, yes, I'm coming, kind mm -hmm. of, my husband was like supposed to go up on the plane the next day. Um, his very, very old uh, good school friend came and said, I need you in Nigeria. Mm. So that night he comes and says, Ronya, we've been dealt a different card, as mm -hmm. they say. Um, and I said, Sweetie, I know it's the same letters, Nigeria, Germany, but I think you've got them mixed up. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's been hearing about Nigeria for ever since he's known me, mm -hmm. obviously. And I've got a lot of uh, friends back home who, you, who I grew up with uh, being here as a kid. Um, so he was really intrigued coming here. Mm. And, uh, and we did it. We decided to come here instead. So you mentioned your husband. Is he um, from Israel as well? Yes, he oh, is. Oh, okay. And he's based here in Nigeria as well? Or you travel back and forth? No, no, no. no. He's here with, with kids. the kids. Okay. Um, so I followed him and I was fortunate enough to find that what I love ball. doing, what I'm passionate about, mm -hmm. to find it so... Um, needed here and to find such a fruitful environment for it. Well, how's the journey been so far and what have your biggest challenges been since you've been out here? Um, gosh, um, I think the first challenge was the culture, the, you know, I mean, everybody probably goes through it when mm -hmm. they're, uh, they move into a different country with a different culture. Mm -hmm. So that was, a, that was the first one. Um, but I was fortunate to work with wonderful people, mm -hmm. directors and uh, producers, and really learn from them. And uh, I, think, I think one of the most uh, profound experiences was working with House Five, that's Ijo Mago Grace and Daniel Oriahi. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lot of fun. I did a lot of nice projects with them that I'm very, very proud of. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and today it's 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 a lot of f trying to to break that mindset. I think mm -hmm. um, of the old Nollywood, you know, mm -hmm. like so the new Nollywood. The way I see it, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not that. You know, I'll only be here two and, been here two and a half years, yes. but okay. the the old Nollywood or the new Nollywood. So the new Nollywood, I think, has more demands in terms of you've got to be more qualified, you've got mm -hmm. to be more trained, you've got to bring more. You know, have more credentials, mm -hmm. be more uh, skilled in what you're supposed to do. It's not just, just like, oh, you can act. Okay, come on, let's mm -hmm. act. Mm -hmm. Let's do something mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. It's not that anymore. And I think a lot of people are realizing that. And that's why the need for um, the acting training mm -hmm. and uh, 
my, the workshops that I've been doing so far. All right. So you recently produced um, Real Time Film Festival. Tell right. us about that. That was awesome. Um, well, Stanley, who's the Stanley Aquare, he's mm -hmm. the founder of Real Time Film Festival. I met him on set of one of his films. I was acting in it, and then I did some production work on it. And uh, he said, Ronnie, I want you to, to come on board of Real Time Film Festival. And being in such an advocate of, of the arts and everything's happening here and, and so passionate, I was like, yeah, well, whatever you need, Stanley. And you know, working with Stanley is, yeah. is an adventure on its own, a, a very um, teaching experience. OK. All right, and you're a documentary Sorry, filmmaker. Uh, we need to quickly oh, take a quick break. Yeah, break. yeah. All right, so we'll take a quick break right now. When we come back, we'll be carrying our conversation on with a uh, drama and acting coach, Ronya Man. We'll be right back. I actually moved back to Nigeria to open a bakery. This was my goal. And everything I did up till this point was in preparation for this. First of all, life was great because I moved in 2015 right before the recession, right? It was awesome. I was like, wow, there's so much money out here, man. The cost of overheads, power generation, water, you have to be your own local government. And there are no tax breaks. Many places where, you know, where they realize the small business environment is difficult would offer some kind of tax breaks and incentives. We don't do that out here. We want you to come back. We want you to, you know, to start businesses here. But we're not going to do anything to help you. All my experiences in the past have led me ultimately to where I am now. Well, 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 welcome back. It's tea time right here on Plus TV Africa. And we're still chatting to singer, songwriter, Ronya Mann. So before the break, you were going to ask her a question. Yeah, moving away from the kind of the glam stuff um, and to a, a bit more serious thing. I know you're a documentary filmmaker. You've made a few documentaries in your time. Um, and obviously you're from Israel. There's a lot of conflict on Israel, Palestine, Gaza border. Have you ever thought of making something you know, groundbreaking about that story? Because it's something that's been going on since forever. Mm. Have you ever, like, explored that? I think being in that conflict isn't giving me that outer look on things to do something that is groundbreaking. Um, I think uh, being here as an outsider, but also being so immersed in the society has allowed me to see things happening in this country in two different perspectives and given me a voice to, to bring it out in a more profound way rather than doing it in my own country. You know, it's like, like the show I did last year telling Nigerian uh, tales, like tribal and heritage tales in a dance show that was fusing both traditional uh, elements and Western elements, you know, like I was kind of trying to interpret what I was studying as the as the culture here through an international language that I knew, you know, for example, okay, the AOs to me are like the angels in in the Western culture, mm -hmm. for example, because they are like connecting between the dead and the living and they're guarding angels of the crown and the royalty. Yeah. So, so I tried to bring out that connection between AOs and angels, or um, to bring out the way that community here sees a child as opposed to how they see an adult. So as a child, you're brought up in a certain way that is very unique to the culture here. Um, and again, I, I don't want to say translated, but it is a kind of a translation, you know? Um, and, and I think that was, a good uh, first break into, <clears throat> like I opened the eyes of a lot of expats who came and saw the show. Um, they said that it brought them closer to this because they didn't know that this culture was so rich and, and profound. Mm -hmm. And then Nigerians who watched the show were like, you, wanted, you made us want to go back and research again all these stories that our you know, grandfathers and ancestors were telling us. So, 
I think being an outsider gives you a better opportunity to voice out things that are happening in a society. Absolutely, and I mean, just when we were on our break, you said some of the like, kind of culture shocks. Obviously, I've just been back as well, so some of the culture shocks that um, that you face, like the kind of the aggression in a positive way, yeah. as it were. Um, and I know in Israel there's been a huge issue with migration um, about, you know, there's, there's been protests about a lot of the African migrants that live out there to basically go back to where they've come from. What are your thoughts on that? There's also a big protest about not, not pushing them out. Mm -hmm. there's a, I have very close friends who are working within the municipalities of Tel Aviv and others to maintain that, um, like, they're, they've created a network to welcome these immigrants, to give them uh, sustainable uh, uh, resources and uh, um, education and health care. And so Israel is very liberal and you'll find a lot of both, you know, it's all about what the media wants to Push. put out okay. there. Yeah. yeah. A, lot okay. of, a lot of people know you're a vocal trainer, but not a lot of people know that you're an award-winning singer back in Israel. True. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now and then you're going to have to sing for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He does this, it's his thing. It's his, does this? Yeah, it's his what did thing. he do to you? Uh, well, <laughs> I, didn't I didn't respond. And I definitely can't sing. So. Um, Wow, like right now? Yeah, yes, right what now. are you going to sing? Let's, this is, this is, is the X Factor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, should it be in Hebrew or in English? <laughs> Hebrew, Hebrew, <laughs> definitely <Way> Hebrew. <laughs> okay, um, right, Hebrew. Should we clap? Mm -hmm. Should we set you off? Hallelujah. That's a nice one. Hallelujah. Yashiru kulam. Vemila khat bodeda Alev male be amon toda Veholem gam hu eze olam nifla Oh, that was so beautiful. What does that mean? It means hallelujah, praise the Lord to the world. With one single word, you can say how wonderful the world is and thank the Lord and thank mm -hmm. for what you have and it's a thank you and yeah. a praise. Well, you, you really got into it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. like, like, now I understand <laughs> why you're, you're a trainer because you got into character just now so that must be easy for you <clears throat> doing your job. All right. Yeah, so All right. many people know me as an acting trainer less as a vocal trainer mm -hmm. but recently I've been working with uh, with a nice, uh, with a very big actor here, actress, about uh, working on her vocals and her acting towards a film role she's going to do in Holland. Tell me, it's okay. John Cassie, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, I think that's where we're going to have to draw the curtains today because we haven't got much time. Unless you want to have uh, say any final thoughts before we we close. Any words of advice to upcoming know. actors, singers, anyone that's trying to break into the media industry, as it were? Um, wow, I'm working on a program now to start and doing more, okay. uh, um, okay. like, training. Huh. <laughs> yeah, because I've been doing it like every three, four months and I'm trying to do it like every month because people keep coming saying, okay. I don't have time, I don't have okay. time. And then go to my website, yeah. bronymanarts.com. Yeah. There's online training there. There's uh, workshops there. You can book a session and I can train you online so you don't have to wait for the next workshop. Yeah, brilliant. All right, thank you so much. Uh, that's where we're going to draw the curtains on the show. Yes, that's where we're going to draw the curtains on the show. Join us this afternoon for Afternoon Tea. Until then, thank you everyone for coming on the show. Thank you indeed. Thank yeah. you for having me. It's been awesome. <laughs>